each of you are here this morning, and welcome to those who will be joining us, tuning in online. We're glad that you're here. It's Sunday morning, and on Sunday mornings we are remembering in this particular season the resurrection. Jesus is risen, and he is risen indeed, and I want to share another a message from uh, the Gospels about the resurrection encounters, and so we'll be looking at that in just a moment as we look at these verses of Scripture that we're going to turn to today from John 21. So if you have your Bibles or follow along on the screen, we'll read these verses from John 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Again, we're glad that you're here, and as we continue on in this part six of Resurrection Encounters, and I've entitled it, Do You Love Me? Do You Love Me? Over the past six weeks, I've been sharing messages about Resurrection Encounters, and we begin with the very first Sunday with the first encounters as Mary Magdalene, the first person to see Jesus as he had risen, and then the other women that were there by the tomb that met Jesus also. And he would appear to his followers, his disciples, over a period of 40 days. Last week I shared how Jesus appeared to Peter and Thomas and Nathaniel and James and John and a couple of others there on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It went like this. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So Simon Peter decided, now he's back in Galilee, that he would go out fishing again. And when he shared what his plans were with his friends, these other disciples, these other six, they said, we'll go with you. Perhaps they were looking for a good catch that they might get some income, raise some money to meet their needs, and they went out to fish. But it wasn't a really good night, and we read, and they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. They caught nothing. After these disciples had spent the whole night out fishing together and caught nothing, very early in the morning, uh, call it a night, they were bringing the boat in. They were heading into shore. They were about a hundred yards off from shore when a man on the shore spoke up to them. He asked them, Have you got any fish? They didn't recognize who this was. But they told him, no, we don't have any fish. 
And then the man on the shore told him, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you'll catch some. And they complied. They threw the nets out on the right side of the boat. And when they did, they had so many fish they couldn't draw it in. John immediately recognized who that was on the shore. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. He jumped in, and he began to immediately swim his way into shore so he could be with Jesus. After they had arrived, they found that Jesus had already made a fire. And with the fire, he was already cooking breakfast. He was cooking fish and bread. And he invited these disciples to come and have breakfast with him. And they did. This resurrection encounter was another time when Jesus ate with his disciples. You know, it's one thing to see what you think is a person, but... When you sit down and eat with them, (laughs) it was a way to confirm and affirm to them that he was alive in the flesh. It was truly Jesus alive in the flesh. And John tells us something more about that morning visit. After they've finished eating breakfast together, we see that Jesus begins this conversation with Peter. Jesus begins a conversation with Peter, and John lets us listen in, shares with us what they talked about. When they had finished breakfast, John tells us, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? What a question! Can you imagine... If Jesus walked into your home today, sat down and ate with you, and then asked you, do you love me? After everyone is eaten and they're refreshed, after a long night of work, Jesus directs this question at Peter. And he asks him if he loves Jesus if he loves him more than these? What an interesting question. And what's so interesting to me is that we aren't told and we don't know for sure who or what the these are. The these could mean maybe Jesus was referring to the fish. <laughs> or the fishing boat, or or the nets. We aren't told. When Jesus asked the question, was was he looking at the fish, or the boat, or the nets? Was he saying to Peter, are you prepared to give up everything again? like he had done three and a half years ago when Jesus said, follow me. And Jesus and Andrew jumped out of the boat and they left it there and they left their business there. Maybe Jesus was asking him if he was completely surrendered to the Lord. Have you given up your business, your fishing business? Maybe in his rush to go back, fishing was a sign that he had sort of backtracked. Was the Lord asking him if he had really given himself up totally to serve the Lord and the Lord's people? However, it could be that the these refers to the others that were sitting there around the charcoal fire. Was Jesus pointing to the other disciples? Do you love me more than these?
When Jesus asked this question, we aren't told where he was looking, what he was pointing to. Maybe Jesus was asking him if he loved him, Jesus, more than these other disciples who also have committed their life to following him. What was Jesus' purpose in this question? Was Jesus reminding Peter? Was Jesus reminding Peter of what he had said on the night that Jesus was arrested? You remember the words that Jesus said heard Peter say so powerfully that night while they were having the Last Supper. Jesus said that in just a little while they would all betray him. But Peter said, even if all fall away because of you, I never will. Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. <laughs> Peter said that just a few days before. Well, how did Peter answer the Lord? How did he respond to this question? Do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Peter answered with a strong, Yes, Lord. Yes, he did love Jesus more than whatever the these are. And he affirmed it with, You know that I love you. Peter, only a little while ago, was the only one who jumped out of the boat and swam as fast as he could into shore so he could be with Jesus because he loved Jesus. Peter makes no reference to the fishing business. He doesn't compare himself to the others like he's compared more than these or more than this business. He makes no reference to any of that and he only asserts to Jesus, I love you and you know that I love you. And Jesus responds with a command, feed my lambs. What do you think about when you think of lambs? Little ones that need special care. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And then Jesus speaks to Peter again. Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. So Jesus asked Peter a second time if he loved him and Peter answered the second time, Yes, Lord, yes, <laughs> you know that I love you. And this time Jesus follows Peter's affirmation of his love with another command. Take care of my sheep. Here it seems Jesus is specifically talking about the ones that have come to Jesus that are now part of his sheepfold. And he's calling on Peter, take care of them. Then Peter, looking at Jesus, and Jesus spoke to him again a third time. He said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Jesus asked Peter a third time if he loved him. And the gospel writer John tells us that in asking this question a third time, Peter was hurt. Why was Peter hurt? I think quite possibly 
It really hit him when this third time of being asked that he had in fact denied the Lord three times just days ago. He had denied that he knew him. And that third time that he denied Jesus, he denied it with curses. And at that very moment, Luke tells us that his eyes met Jesus' eyes. And he felt huge shame. And he went out and wept bitterly. And now face to face, Jesus asks him a third time, do you love me? Deep, penetrating look into his eyes. And he was hurt. And he remembered. He remembered how he was sitting around a charcoal fire warming himself and a, a little girl says, you're one of them. I don't know the man. He remembered that charcoal fire and it just so happens that Jesus this morning has made a charcoal fire to sit Peter down in front of and asks him three times, do you love me? It's quite possible that Jesus knew that Peter needed this. He needed to be given three opportunities to say with all of his heart, I love you, Lord. I love you. To tell the Lord that he really, really loved him. I don't think the three times was a coincidence. Jesus did this on purpose. And I think the fact that John notes how it hurt Peter is some evidence that Peter was still feeling the effects of denying the Lord just days before. You've probably heard some sermons on this passage before. I know I've heard a few. In several of them, I heard the minister bring reference or discuss the fact that the Greek words that are used when Jesus asks, do you love me? And Peter responds that I love you. John records different Greek words. In the first time that Jesus asks him, do you love me? John uses the Greek word agape. You agape me. <laughs> and Peter replies, I love you, phileo. <laughs> uh, they're different words. And the first two are exactly that way. But the third time that Jesus asks him, he says, Peter, do you phileo? Do you love me with that word? And Peter replies that I do love you, phileo. So I've heard a lot of sermons about the Greek words that are used in this, and some have made a very big deal about those words. But I'm also reminded that they didn't actually speak Greek. The gospel is written in Greek, but they spoke Hebrew. And at least one very strongly uh, well-documented knowledgeable professor of New Testament, Michael Barber, says that, there, that there's nothing here that is particular about the use of these words that John simply uses them interchangeably. I'm not going to delve into that because I think the most important thing about this conversation is not about those words, but it's really about Peter being restored. Peter has blown it. <laughs> and Jesus is restoring him in a way that he'll never forget. Jesus is bringing Peter back to the position that Jesus had called him to after his failure on that night of Jesus' arrest, Peter is being recommissioned by the Lord to take care of the Lord's sheep, to feed the Lord's sheep, to tend to the lambs, the little ones. Jesus told him, feed his sheep to truly care for them, to tend them as a leader should. And as we read the book that follows, the book of Acts, 
we see that in just a few short weeks after this experience, that Peter will begin to demonstrate this aspect of leadership that Jesus was calling him to. In those first chapters of the book of Acts, Peter will shine as an early leader, taking care of the sheep, bringing new ones into the sheepfold. His life was changed and he becomes a real fisher of men, an evangelist, a shepherd for Jesus. Well, there's one more conversation that happens here that I want to share and discuss this morning, and that's verses 18 and 19. And Jesus told Peter, Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then said to him, follow me. John tells us that Jesus shared this message to Peter to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Jesus was telling him that toward the end of his life, he was going to be brought places he didn't intend to go. Other people would have charge over him. He'd be under the control of someone else and they would lead him where he didn't want to go. John tells us this was said by Jesus to indicate the kind of death Peter would experience. And the writings of the early church, the, the, the records that we have of the church fathers tell us that about three decades later, that Peter himself would be arrested in Rome, brought to Rome where he would be crucified, even as the Lord had been. Jesus' final message to Peter were two simple words. Follow me. For those who have been coming out watching The Chosen on Friday nights, as Jesus calls his disciples, he has two words. Follow me. And he affirms, Peter, you've been brought into my apostleship. Follow me. These are the same words that Jesus spoke to him three and a half years earlier following another night of no good fishing. <laughs> and Jesus tells Peter, put out a little further and throw your nets down for a catch. And he does. And he catches an incredible catch. And Peter falls down before Jesus and says, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. And Jesus tells him, follow me, and I'm going to make you fishers, a fisher of men. And now three and a half years later, Jesus affirms Peter and tells him again, follow me. Follow me. Follow in my footsteps. Do what I have done. Jesus said in his wonderful prayer in John chapter 17 that he had taken care of like a good shepherd his sheep. And now he tells Peter, tend and take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Take care of the lambs. Follow me. Do what I've done sharing the good news and in leading people. And Jesus forgave Peter of his earlier betrayal and showed Peter that he had trust in him and was giving him this leadership position to shepherd and care for God's people. He was to feed and to protect believers, to seek out the lost, those that were still out in the world and bring them in. Over the past six weeks, we've been looking at quite a number of resurrection encounters. We saw from that first Sunday, Mary Magdalene and the other women who first went to the tomb and saw that it was empty, then each experienced an encounter with Jesus. The Bible tells us that the next one to see Jesus was Peter. 
The scripture doesn't give us any details of that encounter. It puts a veil over it. But Jesus then appeared to Peter. And then Jesus appeared to the disciples on the Emmaus Road. And then Jesus appeared in the upper room with the eleven, minus one, Thomas not being there, showed himself to his disciples and ate broiled fish with them. And then eight days later, Jesus came again into that upper room and this time Thomas was with them. And then a little while later, these disciples have gone to Galilee and gone out fishing and Jesus appears to them again. And now we've looked at this conversation of Peter and Jesus there on the Sea of Galilee. Interestingly, there are still several more encounters. I could take this series on for a couple more months because there are many more encounters. Jesus meets with his followers again over the period of 40 days before he ascends to the throne in heaven. And all of these appearances, every single one of them were to help his followers to become thoroughly convinced that Jesus was alive and had flesh and bone, a real body, a resurrected body. His resurrected body was different. It wasn't the same resurrected type of body that Lazarus had who was raised back from the dead. Jesus' body was different, and so they had to see it again and again, talk to him again and again, eat with him, and get a an understanding that this body that Jesus has is different. It's incorruptible. It's imperishable. It's not subject to the laws of nature and the same limitations that our body is, that Lazarus' raised body was. Jesus could appear and disappear. He could appear in a locked room, and yet he was not a spirit or an apparition he was a resurrected body. He invited his followers time and again, touch me, hold me, examine the scars, look where the nails were driven, look where the pierced side of that spear was driven. He invited his followers to touch and examine him and he ate meals with them. Jesus' resurrected body was real, it was physical, but it was different. With all of these appearances, they became more and more convinced. The gospel writers recorded their experiences for us. So we would have all the proof we need in the words of the Bible, in the testimony of these believers. And John tells us, he tells us that all of these things that he's written are only a fraction of all the things that Jesus did. He's only recorded a few of the many events of Jesus' life on earth, but he recorded enough. He included everything that we needed to know to believe, and in so doing, to have life. Do you believe? And if you believe and have committed to follow him, may I ask you one more time, do you love him? And you could say, do you love them more than these? And you could put a lot of things into these. Your home, your car, your stuff, your money, your means of making money. Do you love me more than these? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for these words in John's Gospel. Thank you that you have unpacked for us more of these resurrection encounters. Thank you that you restored Peter, who had miserably failed in a moment of crisis. But he really did love you, and you brought him back, restored him, 
put him back to work and empowered him and he would become a great leader. Lord, you want to do that for each one of us. If we've had a failure, it's not the end. And you want to restore, reinstate, repurpose, put people to work. You want us to be building your kingdom. So help us, Lord, to like Peter, let you minister to us through our disappointments and our heartaches and restore us, Lord, that we can truly, again, love you. In Jesus' name, amen.